Welcome to Study Time, a televised home learning program produced by Rwanda Education Board. Hello, students. Welcome again into this TV lesson learning program. My name is Teacher Jamari, and today's lesson is for all of the senior six, and it is a continuation of unit number five that we have introduced. Unit number five is the atomic nuclear and radioactive decay. So before we start the lesson of today, there is a question that I have for you here, and it is going to help us to get into this lesson easily. Now, students, let's go to the question here. So uh, the question goes like this. It is simple to just to answer true or false. Radioactive decay will usually produce a data nucleus that is closer to the line of stability than a parent nucleus. So from this question, you remember, uh, we have the radioactive decay, you remember that. It is uh, a way that heavy, a way that unstable nuclei will change into the other nuclei. That is the uh, in explanation of the radioactive decay. Then there is a daughter. A daughter, it means that that produced nuclei. Good, that is stable, or that like stable nuclear. And here we have a closer to the line of stability. Now, student, line of stability, I hope that I have a graph that we have introduced the last time. Here we had a graph into which we could now see the line of stability here. Do you remember that? So this line of stability, if I draw this very quickly, then I find that I have this line of stability. This is another line that I have. You see the graph? And then there is a group here of the element, this group here of the element, and the other group down this curve, down the curve here, it is another group of the element. Now, students, I hope that this is the same curve as what we have discussed the last time. Now, the question, the daughter nucleus that is closer to the line of stability than a parent. Parent that you are saying is the, is this unstable, is what was unstable nuclei, and then it is becoming stable to produce that daughter nuclei. Now, the question is whether this daughter is now going to be closer to the line of stability than the parent that gave out this daughter. Now, student, what do you think with this answer between the two? Is it true or is it false? It is your time. Yes, students, the answer here, it is true. Here's the reason. The reason here that we have, remember the reason of radioactive decay, is because we have too many, many neutrons or protons. We have too many protons than the number of neutrons. Or we have more neutrons than the number of protons in the nucleus. And then it is not easy for all of these uh, neutrons into the nucleus to fit in there, and they choose, or they are now not uh, feeling, uh, they are not fitting into that nucleus, and they make that nucleus to become unstable. And for the case of many protons, this makes now the force of the person. It is uh, very big into that, and then they are not fitting again into the nucleus. Now, students, we came now to answer this. So what we have here is that it is true that radioactive decay will usually produce a daughter nucleus that is closer to the line of stability than parent nucleus. In another word, if we have maybe what was here is now decaying, it will now get closer to this line 
Do you understand? It will get closer. It will now become toward the line of stability. Or if there is another that you have here, it will now have, it will tend to come closer to that line of stability. Then you have it becoming here. Okay? So, and uh, what we have as a question for about this diagram, again, I have asked you to explain or to give this graph and then immediately show where we have the nuclei giving or decaying with the beta minus. I hope you remember that question. And here we have uh, this uh, nuclear being there will decay by, uh, just by, the, by uh, emitting a negative beta. But the ones over here, they will decay emitting a positive beta. But the ones of this side here, try now to see. What I, have, what I try now to put here, if you have a T3, all of the elements, the elements that are at this, at this other side here, they give out the alpha decay. This is something that we have discussed. Of course, uh, make sure you have it as a, as a, here it is Z, protons, this is N, and then this is the line of stability. Uh, this is the line where we have N equals to Z. The line of stability is this one, okay? So, and then we have this uh, uh, atoms at this side will decay by emitting a negative beta, and the ones of here will decay emitting a positive beta. That is a positron, and here it is the electron. And the ones of this side now, here, so the ones of this side, they will decay by emitting this alpha, alpha particle. So we will get to understand this more into the explanations that we will now be carrying out into this. Now let's go on with the lesson of today. We have characteristics of radioactive substances and the properties of emitted radiations. By the end of this lesson, I want you students to be able to describe properties of different radiations. That is one. Two. I want you to be able to explain the alpha decay process, alpha decay process, the one that we are saying there, okay? Now, good, and we will add another, of course, beta decay. So here, what we can now start with, first of all, there, are, there is a question that I want you, again, to start with. What do you understand what do you understand by uh, these are the Becquerel rays? What are these rays? Because you see, you know, there are so many rays that we have now to understand here before we go on. What do you understand by this Becquerel rays? Of course, this Becquerel rays are the rays that are emitted by the radioactive substances. Radioactive substances. These are substances that are able to emit these radiations, okay? So these are the rays that are emitted, emitted by the radioactive, radioactive substances. So here we have uh, these substances that are known uh, like, uh, let's say, like uranium, uranium, so we have uh, thorium. So you see thorium, so maybe to, to show you this uh, uranium, make sure you have that uranium is here. So we will come back on this uh, periodic table here. So uranium is here, and as you see, it is uh, uranium, uh, uranium to uh, 238 here, but we, we will now see the examples on that. And uh, we have a thorium next to that. It is a radioactive substance. 
so radioactive substance, it means that it can now decay to become another nuclear. It can uh, emit the radiation Z, but it's spontaneous. Spontaneous means that without any external influence to rate that uh, nuclear emit the radiations, radiations, okay? Now, students, again, these are named because of this, uh, because of after the, uh, after Henry Baker Ray. This is the Baker Ray, uh, the Baker Rays, they are named after the Henry Baker Ray. And then we call them as the Baker Rays. And the other ones are the, what we call the background. Background rays. So for this background, background rays are these rays that are surrounding us. In the everywhere that we pass. So even here, even where you are sitting, there are these radiations. Of course, these radiations, they may be emitted by some of the, some stones. The stones may emit the radiations. The radiation may also be emitted by the, the, the okay, the telephone also can emit these radiations. Okay, all of these radiations that we say, but that are not included into this uh, into the ones that are emitted by the radioactive substances. They are what we call the background rays. That's good. Then rays have the characteristics of these radioactive substances. Characteristics. Characteristics of radio, uh, radioactive substances. What are these uh, characteristics? Number one. So what you have now to write down is that the atom of radioactive substance, the atom of this, the one that we know to be radioactive substance, it will continue decay. It will continue becoming another stable nuclei. This means that when it decays at the first time, it becomes another element, another atom. But that atom is not again stable. That atom again will decay. That is one. And then here, to mean that it will continue decay, it doesn't mean that, uh, it means that uh, here the first decay is leaving some other atoms of this parent nuclei. Do you understand? So then this one will continue now decay because just by emitting the radiations. And another characteristic is number two. So they will continue decaying by emitting the radiations. And another point number two is that these radiations produced by the radioactive substances, they may produce the bright flashes. Uh, the radiations, radiations produce, produce the bright, bright flashes. It means that when these ones, they hit some of the Compound, they produce the light, the light flashes from this compound, which makes the reasons for them now to be used now sometimes to be uh, giving a mixture, and then that mixture may produce the the light or the flashes. And again, in number three is that they are also uh, used to kill bacteria. That is the Another characteristic uh, to kill, use it to kill bacteria. Bacteria means that during the packaging of the, uh, the food, fruits, 
that may now last longer during the travel from, uh, from one country to another or from one region to another, they have, first of all, now to pass them into the source of these radiations and then to kill the, uh, this uh, bacteria and so that they can now last longer than expected. So rays have now the properties. Properties of this, properties of the radioactive substances of this radiation, radiations. What are the properties? The properties that we have, let's have this uh, first discussion. So I want to give these uh, properties, of course, uh, in terms of uh, properties, in terms of what we have as the, as the types of radiation, then what consists of that, and then after we give this again as a, a range or in terms of range. So here we have this. Uh, we have... So here we have a... So this is the, the property, and we have alpha radiation. This alpha radiation it consists of helium nuclei. Helium nuclei means what? Means that we have, uh, we have the alpha, that is alpha, it has this, it consists, consists of, of two protons and two neutrons. What does it mean with this uh, two protons and two neutrons? It means that uh, it acts as a helium atom. This is what we have as here, and this is helium nucleus. It acts as, or it behaves as this, new, uh, as this helium nucleus. And then, for them, the range is that they can even travel uh, just uh, like five centimeters in the air and can be stopped by a thick uh, sheet of paper. So I've tried now to see maybe this uh, sheet of paper and then say, if I have this one as the, as the uranium, as this, no, no, this is not a uranium, sorry. This is a source of alpha particle. So if I have it here, so to mean that can now be stopped by this paper. When I have it, it can't pass through the paper. And again, and again, then be, uh, come to the, uh, to the, so, to, to, to a detector. So if there is a detector of this radiation, that detector will now indicate nothing. No radiation. Because this radiation has now stopped by this uh, paper. Do you understand that? That's good. So, but again, they are highly amazing because, of course, they, are, they have a high number of this charge. And then first, here we have beta radiation. First, electrons. Up to few, up to few meters in air and can be stopped by the few millimeters of aluminum. So these few millimeters of aluminum we can also say that it can also be stopped by a glass. So this means that for this alpha, they, pa they can't pass through this paper. They are stopped. But if I have this other alpha, other beta, these are the beta, this is the alpha, then this is the, uh, where is beta, beta? That beta, then this beta is when you write it now in, uh, in front of this paper, it passes. When it passes, it continues. It means that if you are here, you will now be affected by this radiation. Do you understand that? But if you are next to this grass block, these ones cannot pass, and then you are safe being here, being to this, side, to this other side. That is for what we have by this radiation. 
And they are less than alpha anionization of these ones. It is less than E, less than E, what we have as alpha. Then we have a gamma. For this gamma, they, ha they have a very high frequency, and they are, of course, electromagnetic wave. This, they can pass into several hundred meters, and then they are weak, much less than E, beta, in terms of ionization. It means that for these ones, they can pass evenly through the glass. They pass and they continue. Remember, this is the gamma. This is the beta, and these are the alpha. The alpha, they don't pass. But this beta, they pass. And this gamma, they pass, and they even pass the glass. They can now be stopped by the very big concrete block of lead. This is what can stop this gamma. So if you are behind this rate, you are safe, right? Now, students, let's talk about now the speed, even if we don't have it here, but the speed. The speed of these ones, this is high, it has a high speed. Remember, gamma has high speed. And the speed of these ones, because they are electromagnetic wave, they have a speed of the light in a vacuum. And this one, they are the next to have the speed. And these ones, they are the last. They have a small speed, but they are faster. They have a high speed, but this is a very high speed and the speed of light in a vacuum. You understand that? Now, uh, and again, what we can now say is uh, uh, in terms of penetration. Penetration, this penetrate more, and this does not penetrate more, but this is less penetrate. Uh, penetration is now poor for these ones. And about now the biological damage. Biological damage, these ones, they can now be uh, danger when you do, when you throw, when it is possible for you uh, to uh, just to, to drink this, uh, uh, to drink something that it contains this uh, radiation. It is may, just, it is very, it can damage your, your body. But this damage more when they penetrate only. Do you understand? In terms of penetration, these are bad, and these are uh, the next, or uh, this uh, comes, uh, comes the last, and these are the very last one. And when you, these ones, because they, they penetrate, you don't even need to understand that you can have them as a drink or from food. Now, students, let's have the alpha decay. When we say alpha decay here, this is when there is alpha, as we have said, it contains four and then two. This time, the atom, the atom, uh, the atom that change, that changes into another, another means that there is a, a, a example, there is a change, it changes it changes the mass and charge. Here is the way and charges. So here is the example. It means that if we take that uranium and then it decays to emit alpha particle, that is four and two. What does it mean? It means that this uranium, let's take this uranium to 135 and then it is 92. 92, it is that uranium that you are taking here. So we have a uranium 92. It becomes an element that we are going now to find. What is this element? So you check on that one. Here you have, what you have uh, is uh, uh, uranium, this is 235. No, let's take 238, first of all, to that one. 238, and then this becomes 234. And here, what do you think? This one becomes 90. And we need now to find this element, this atom that is at 90. 
What is 90 here? So this is 92, 91, and then 90. This is thorium. So this X is thorium. Do you understand the students? Thorium here, it is a decayed atom. And this means that this thorium again, this thorium, now we can now change it to that one. It is thorium 204, and then this is 90. It can now decay into another by emitting alpha particle, that is 402. And then, students, here it means that we may have 230, and then here we have uh, 88. And then we have to check that element. Where is 88? 88 is, uh, is that radium. That radium here is what we now have to say X is C radium. That is radium 200, radium 200 and, and, and 30. That is what we have. Now students, let's have a, a quick uh, other explanation, but of what we have as the, uh, as the beta decay. So what is that beta decay? This beta decay here, we have beta decay, but let's start with a positive, with a positive, positive beta decay. Now here, what we have is that the proton here will now be combined with the uh, proton to the, the proton, when it combines with the electron, this is something that is different from when a proton is going out to be changed into another particle. But what is here is a beta decay, which means that this time it is a positron. We have an element, and it becomes another element, then plus what we, what we have as this positron, positron, you have it as Z, plus one, zero, then plus a neutrino. So when you have this A and Z here, so this is going out to be A, and this is going out to be Z, plus, minus one. Minus one means that we have, you see what is there. This, this is zero and zero. And then here there is, this becomes that, and here, this is it. In order now to have this equal to what we have by this side, it has to be Z minus 1. In another word, if we have an example, example to this, example to this one, it is, uh, let's say that we have a sodium. Sodium, it decays to give an element with a positron emission. This is one, and a neutrino. So this is, this is sodium 22. That 22 means that we have sodium, it is Z at 11 here. So this is sodium. Sodium there, 11. And then we have sodium 11, and this becomes 10, and this is only 22. It doesn't change. This element is going out to be which one? It is going out to be... A neon. Now, my dear students, I want to leave you with the homework. The homework that we have here, I want you to write uh, a nuclear equation for the following decay. This is alpha emission from this polonium nucleus to produce a lead. And number two, a nuclide of manganese undergoes positive beta decay to form a nuclide of chromium. Complete the equation for this decay process. We have this equation. So you do the same for this one, but where you have, of course, this, the same thing. Now students explain what is meant by electron capture for the decay process. I thank you very much for having me today, and I see you for the next other lesson. Bye-bye.